Hi everyone, welcome to Dairos.io, where we build DevOps engineers. My name is David. On today's video, we're going to be doing some um, little setup for um, our Windows system, right? Um, this video basically is basically for our Windows user. You know, we have got some feedback that uh, most of our videos have been on the Mac system. So today we are making a video for our Windows user. We're going to see how we're going to set up our environment in order to, you know, implement the impl um, the PBO project easier and a more interesting way. Okay, so what we're going to do, I have um put them down in a notepad. Okay, so that we don't lose track of what we are doing or why we are here, right? So I'm going to um look look at installing a Windows terminal. Um, right in the past. We have been using tools like Git Bash, Mobile XTEM, and Putty, you know, to SSH into um, our EC2 instance, right? But now we have some nice tools, all right, in, in Windows environment itself, which is called Windows Terminal, um, which is quite useful and um, can also do the job of SSH. So we don't need to install third party tools like Putty, Mobile XTEM, and the likes, right? Then also, too, we're going to install VS Code and VS Code extensions. Yeah. We're going to install Git. Yeah, we're going to install what we call the Open SSH server, right? Yeah, that's what it's called, Open SSH server. We're also going to see how to install that, right? Then we're going to create an instance in AWS. So um, before you continue this video, I want to be sure that you already have an AWS account. We have a GitHub account also too. It's important. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to say be sure you have an um, AWS free CA account here. And um a free and also to a GitHub account. Of course, GitHub is free. And a GitHub account. Okay. We're going to see um a little bit of documentation here and some little bit. Um, git commands okay then um once we create the instance in aws we also want to ssh into the instance right then we're going to do brief intro of markdown for documentation you want to see what the dot md format means and how to write documentation in that um language yes you can call it a language then we're going to see some simple git commands just like git add Git commit and git push just to you know store our documentation from our local PC into our GitHub account. So those are the few things we're going to be doing today. Right. So we're going to do it together. Right now I don't have Windows Terminal installed. I don't have VS Code installed. I don't have Git installed. I don't have open SSH server installed. So we're going to do this together. Now what we are trying to do is to ensure that our, our Windows machine is are, you know, sufficient to do the PBO project. Yeah, at some, at some point, the Windows um, environment do have some limitations, right? But um, for the first few projects, yeah, we can um, sufficiently use the Windows, um, Windows system. Then probably when we get to project 10 or 11, if you need some more advanced settings, then you can start looking at WSL, which is the Windows subsystem Linux, okay? So I can install some like something like a Linux kernel into your Windows machine. But we're not going to do that today. We just want to keep it simple and straightforward. Right. So let's get to it now. Okay, so I'm going to go now to the first thing we want to do according to our notepad is we want to install Windows Terminal. Excuse me, please. We're going to install Windows Terminal. So I'm going to go right into Microsoft Store. Okay, so Microsoft Store is just like um the place where you go there to, from the word store, yeah, you get things from there, right? So I'm gonna allow this to, I hope it doesn't take so much time. Okay. Um, oh no. Yeah, we are in, right? So you can enlarge, you can sign up to enlarge. I'm signing already. So I'm gonna come here and search for Windows Terminal. Yeah, so you can see, click on the first one here, Windows Terminal, right? Click on it. Okay, so you know, click on Get. Very simple and easy to install. 
Oke. Okay. Ya. Yeah. Ending. Starting to download. Downloading progress. Okay. Now why this is downloading? We are going to multitask. <clears throat> okay. So let's go to our browser and let's download VS Code. So if you just click, if you just go into your Google browser or Microsoft Edge browser, whatever browser you are using, <clears throat> excuse me, you are good to go. Right. So I'm going to say download VS Code. It's actually called, it's actually called Visual Studio Code. In fact, I'm going to type it that way. Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code is an editor, right? Okay, let's download them. We talked about it, right? So let's download Visual Studio Code. So I'm on Windows, so definitely I'm going to click Windows, right? So if you are, you are on Debian, which is Ubuntu, or RPM, which is Red Hat and Fedora and SUS, if you're on Mac, you click on this. But I'm on Windows, and this video is basically for Windows, yeah. So let's click on this and click on save. Yeah, that's gonna download really pretty fast. So let's go back to my Windows store and let's see. Oh, Windows terminal is done and ready to use. Let's click on open. So you can see that Windows terminal is installed. So um, the beauty of this particular tool is uh, you can then have access to um, various terminal shell right from a single point of view. So if I wanna open CMD, I can open CMD from here, but by default, it opens PowerShell for us. Okay, and I've come to observe that there's some commands that works on PowerShell that don't work on command prompt. So I don't know why I think that's Windows for you, right? But this is a great tool and we can use this tool effectively and it's a nice one. So we're gonna use the Windows terminal. We can run SSH command from here. You can even run some ls dash l some simple Linux commands. Oh, sorry. Okay, LS is working, dash L is not working. Okay, so that's it. So Windows Terminal is installed. So I'm gonna to wanna to pin it to my tax bar because it's gonna be one of the two you're gonna use frequently, right? So you're gonna pin this to task bar. What I just did was to let you click on this, then the option is pin to task bar. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, so another thing I would like us also to look again is like, uh, creating a folder let's let me add it to our list creating a workspace folder yeah let's add that to our list right like that so um i don't need the windows store anymore i'm going to close it and mind you our vs code download is complete so let's double click on the exe file of course i have to accept the agreement and you want to read this you're welcome Next, so I'm going to leave that the default part, and you must have this enough space. Okay, create a start menu folder. Just um, okay, you want to check these boxes, which is create a desktop icon, add code action to Windows Explorer. Okay, okay, add open with code. Yeah, that's fine. Next, no, I don't change anything here. You don't want to install so. Let's wait for this um, beautiful tool to install. Okay. Yeah. So let's see what's next on our list. So we have installed Windows Terminal, right? The next thing we are installing VS Code and VS Code extension. Then we're going to talk a little bit about what VS Code is. Okay. Finish launch Visual Studio Code. Awesome. Yes, do that for me. Okay. So it's launching. Visual Studio Code. Yes, I like it dark, so I'm going to select dark. Okay. Now, before we go ahead and install VS Code extension, I like to talk about VS Code a little, uh, Visual Studio Code. So, um, one key thing you need to understand about Visual Studio Code is that it's an editor, and it makes your work easier. Why do I say that? When you are using Visual Studio Code. You have access to text editor and at the same time you have access to terminal so unlike your windows terminal if you want to use an editor on your own on your terminal you have to use editor like vi okay so and once you say vi it takes over the terminal entirely but what text editor gives to you is that you have the options to see your text up here and probably have a terminal beneath here so you're going to see that in action 
in a couple of minutes, right? So the next thing before we install VS Code extensions and the likes, so the next thing I want us to do is actually we're going to create a folder for ourselves. We're going to call it that folder our workspace. So it's going to be nice that you have a folder where you keep your stores. Okay, so you just like um organizing yourself. That's basically what it is. So you can place this folder anywhere. Okay, it is fine anywhere. Okay, well, it's more reasonable to just leave places in documents. Okay, and I can just call this my workspace. I can say David workspace. Just something that can you know that okay, this is we actually keep my folders right. I mean for learning basically. So I don't have to you know probably I'm working on a particular I'm working on project one and project one is stored on desktop. I'm working on project two. Project two is stored in download. So it doesn't look organized. Right, so enough of the talk. Let's go ahead and create the folder. So I'm just going to say, because I like to use my name, we'll just say David Workspace. You could use anything you like. You could say ice cream, you could say burger, you could say, you know, but try to use a name that's, you know, it's pointing towards what you want to do. So I'm going to call that David Workspace, right? So and another thing uh, you need to notice that when you are creating a, a folder, it's not really nice to create a folder and then put, a blank space between the name of your folder. This is not really cool because one, at the point in time, if you if you need to use the work uh, the path to this to this folder, a space in the middle won't do you any good, right? So it's okay to use underscore or hyphen, right? So let's keep it this way. Now let's go ahead and set up our VS Code. So my VS Code is installed. So you can see that it's asking me to open a folder. Right, so a folder what that you want to edit that you want to work upon, right? So I'm going to click on open folder. Okay, so right now I'm going to go ahead and open my workspace. So I'm going to close the document. I'm going to select David workspace and select folder. Working, working, working. Yes, yes, of course, I trust myself. Now you can see that this folder is open. Excuse me. <clears throat> But currently, we don't have anything in this folder. It is empty, right? So I was saying the other time that um, this editor gives you access to um to a terminal at the same time and it didn't at the same time. So you can see when I click on, you can see this option here that says terminal. So you click on terminal, see new terminal, and it gives you access to a PowerShell video um instance. Sorry, a PowerShell terminal. You can see that by default, the PowerShell terminal opens to this directory. You have right here in, of this David workspace. So please, um, if this um terms I'm saying directory ls commands look strange to you, I um encourage you to please ensure that you take the Linux courses. It's very very important, right? Okay. So I'm seeing something here. Hold on. Let's go. Okay. I, I can see I added a space to my um to my naming convention. So that, that, that was a mistake. So for me to do that, I'm going to close this. I want to come and do a rename here. So as I said earlier, it's not really going to be nice. We add space. So I've removed the space and I've saved it. So I'm going to go back to my VS code. Okay. Let's open the VS code again. That's it. So let's say we show. Wow. Yeah, it is Visual Studio code. Now, again, I would like to pin this to my taskbar because it's one of the tools I use frequently. So I'm going to pin it to taskbar. So let's go ahead and open a folder. Okay, so we know, of course, you already know the folder. I want to open David Workspace, select folder. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and install some uh, extensions right here. So the first extension I like to install is I like this extension that gives me some icons, material icon. If we say material, just type material. So this first one here, material icon. I like this icon. You're gonna see the function very soon. Okay. Then another thing you want to install, you would like to install the Git extension. Okay, so it's asking me to select the team I want. So this material icon is a team. You can decide to install it or not, but I like the team and you're gonna see the reason why I like it very soon. So I'm gonna select this as default. Okay, so we need to install some Git extension. So when, once you type git, there are a lot of options for, for you to choose. But there are specific ones um, after. The first one is this, install this git extension. Um, 
think this too might be yeah i think that's just enough ah, i think that's enough yeah so that's just the two extensions yeah another one i like to install is because sometimes you might be digging dealing with a long set of codes and you're going to see bracket everywhere and you might be confused which bracket is which so you can also install bracket here colorizer yeah this first two over here yeah awesome 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 okay so that has been installed right so so let's go back to our checklist we're following our checklist right so I've we have installed Windows Terminal. We have installed VS Code and VS Code extensions. We have created a workspace folder for ourselves. So the next thing is to install Git, right? So for you to install Git on your on your on your machine, you can go to your Chrome browser or you can go to your Edge browser. Okay, so so let's go to Edge browser. Yeah, let's just go and um, let's just search for install Git on Windows 10 specifically. So download Git source code management, that's what SCM means, source code management. Okay, so we have, as usual for Mac, Windows and Linux system or Unix system. So I want to click on download for Windows. Okay, okay, so click here to download for Windows. Yeah, it's going to download, then save. That was pretty fast. Then double click. I double click. Okay, now I do. Next. Next. Do not change anything. Let's just follow the default installation. Um, no asking me if i want to install it's asking me for my pin so i'm going to put in my pin to confirm the installation now it's installing oh access denied setup i was unable to create the history three program access denied so why is this uh volume pack changes let me download that again. Let's download again. Let's see. That shouldn't cost any euro, but that's strange. Okay, let's see. C programs, right? Okay. Next. Uh, this looks different. Check this. Next. Next. Yeah, not change anything. Next. 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 Then next and next and next. Stop. Oh no. What is wrong? So it can create a folder in this particular file. Okay. So I'm going to cancel this. There's another, I'm um, using Winget to, okay, let me see the reason why it can create a folder in this particular place. Okay. Let's go to this PC. Uh, this PC is user. So we want to create a folder here. Let me see the error again. Let's go to downloads. So um, I'm going to assume you're not going to have this um, this particular issue. 
pardon. So it wants to create a folder. In, it wants to create a folder in program file slash kit. So let me see where that folder is. Program files. This kit. So why is the folder has been created already? Let's delete this. It's asking for my password. So this looks like a permission issue. So let's try and install it again. So we're saying the specified installation folder does not seem to be writable. So I think this um, user on my PC, because I actually created this user for this particular video, does not have enough permissions. Okay, so let's let me browse another. Um, let me browse another part. But I, I assume that this is going to work for you out of the box. I don't think you are going to have this um, issue, right? Okay, let's install here first. Next. 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 Okay, just as usual. Now it's installing now. But I, I'm pretty sure that you're not going to have that same error with me. I know I was having the error and I fixed it. Okay, so let it get installed now. Yeah, that almost scared me. Okay. Work faster, work faster, work faster. Come on, come on, come on. You know, as a DevOps engineer, dealing with errors. It will be something you get, you know, acquainted with, you know, you do errors almost every day of, of your job and you have to solve the error because people in the team looks up to you to solve a particular error. Okay, so I don't want to see the ugly release notes. Yeah, don't you git bash, let's see. Okay, so this git bash. So by installing this git bash, um, this git of a thing, it has actually installed git on our system. So let me go to, this file, let me type git. Okay. Time git is not recognized. This might be a big issue. Okay, because I've changed the default parts. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is, I know, I'm sure that you know have this error, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, right? Then I'm going to set this um, part of my system. So the issue is with this user I'm signing with. So this user does not have enough permissions, right? To install on this system. So I'm going to log, um, pause the video, give the user more permissions, then try to install it again in the, in the, in the appropriate directory, then we'll come back to finish this off. Yeah, I'll be back in, in some minutes right now. Okay, so I'm going to pause the recording. Hi guys, I'm back and I fixed the error for that particular user. Okay, so so now if I run git command, it's going to work fine. So, but trust me, you are not going to have this error. It's going to work for you out of the box, right? But I'm going to say again, the reason why I was having that error was because I just created this new user for this PC, right? For this particular PC, I just created this new user called Shego. So it turns out that I didn't give the user enough permission to install things on this system. So I had to fix that behind the, behind the camera. Now we are good to go. We have Git installed. Yeah, so we have installed Windows Terminal successfully. We've installed VS Code. We have installed, we have got a workspace folder. We've installed Git, right? So the next thing is to install open SSH server. 
very simple. Just go to Google Chrome, your browser. Now, excuse me, I can close this. I don't need it anymore. I can close this, I don't need it anymore. Okay, and yeah, I'm gonna add the link um, to the description box in the video so you can have access to everything, right? Now let's install uh, open SSH server. Oh, okay. Windows. Okay. So I think, oh, I have it open here already. Okay, so I can close it. So I'm going to provide the links to everything I'm showing you right now. So you can see install open SSH using PowerShell, right? Okay, so, so I'm going to, I can see use my Windows terminal because it has PowerShell by default, but we need to run every command as um, administrator, right? As an administrator. Okay, so I'm going to search PowerShell. Can do PowerShell. You can even do the Windows terminal, right? You can even use the Windows terminal. I want us to get used to that. So I'm going to run as administrator. We're going to left click, then click on run as administrator. So it's asking for my pin to be sure I want to do that. Okay. So, so I'm running as administrator right now. You can see administrator Windows PowerShell, right? So let's go ahead and get the first command PowerShell, get Windows capability online. It's okay. So don't bother about this commands for now. So let's just copy and let's click on this. So this is one we are using the one with administrator. So I'm going to paste and click enter. Good. So you can see that, oh, that's very good. We have open SSH client installed. We have open SSH server installed. So this might not be the case for you, right? So if it shows you not present and not present, very simple, just continue to follow this um, documentation that was just copy and paste the commands, copy and paste the commands. So mind you, this is a result. You don't have to copy this. I mean, this is an output, pardon. So this is an output, you don't have to copy this. Okay, so but particularly for me right now, I have it installed, that's lucky of me. I have it installed. So, but very simple, just copy the commands, then you paste. That's it. So it's going to install for you and it's going to run. You don't have to do anything mysterious. Right. So it's trying to install for me, but I have it installed already. But I just want to show you that you just copy the command and paste. So the ones with the hash is a comment. So the terminal will see that as a comment. Right. Okay. So you can see that online through restart the needed force. So if I click on it, it was very quick because I've been installed already. But if you are doing it for the first time and you don't have it installed, it might take a little bit of time. So you just have to be patient, right? So, so I have all, I've done all this previously, right? So I'll say you don't have to do anything. Just click on copy and paste on your terminal, right? So you stop here. You don't need to connect to any server yet, right? Because you have not created our instance, right? So you stop at this particular point. So that is that for installing open SSH server. So let's check if this is complete. So this is complete control L to clear, to clear your screen. So another thing again, I want to show you is installing, um, creating SSH key for yourself on your Windows terminal. Okay. So if you just come here, if you just click on copy the commands, Right, so as I say, don't have to do anything, just copy and, and paste, start SSHD. That's it, so I've done all this before. Okay, so that's why it's very, very fast for me. So in case you want to generate a key for your system, right, so this will actually be, be needed. So let's click on copy. So I'm gonna click on copy, I'm gonna to wanna to generate my own key. Now, just to say, this key we are generating is totally different from the key you're going to download on AWS console. I'm saying this, so I'm going to say it when you get there again. So enter. So it's going to generate this key and save it in this particular folder, users, adebayo.ssh.name of this key. 
Okay, so you might want to change the part if you want to go out, click the default part. Yes, over, I've done this before, so you just see it already exists. Okay. So if I want to generate, okay, that's it. Now, well, if I want to generate for this other user, so you can see this user is added by you, right? If I want to generate for this other user, right here, which is Shagun, right? If I paste the command here, SSH key gen, so you can see users Shagun.sshd. So click on enter. Just click on enter, don't impute anything, and boom, you have your key generated. So what's going to happen is that two things are going to happen. It's going to generate a private key, and it's going to generate a public key, right? You don't share your private key anywhere. You only share your public key. So I go to this particular directory, users, shagun.sshd. You're going to see something there. So let's go there. So I mean, users, okay, so I'm going to show you. You just come to this PC. You can see from your local disk, click on it. Then come to users. So for you, the user will be different, right? So, but this is for me now. This is user I created for SSHK4. So you see .ssh, open it. So you can see this is the private key and this is the public key, right? So what you want to do is to um, open it with notepad. So if I click on this, open with, uh, Open with look at open with here. So just open with notepad. Okay. So you can see this is the private key. You can see it has the key, private key there. You can close this. If I do this one also to open with uh more apps, select notepad, you can see dot pop. So you can see that this is a public key. If I don't have anything like private, right? Okay, so good. So that's it. So let's go back to documentation we are following. So I've generated the keys and we are good. Okay, so for now, um, we are not, we're, not, we're not going to talk about SSH agents yet. Later in the project, I think in project 10, 11, we get to start using the concept of SSH agents. So keep this document documents for yourself. Save the link somewhere else. You want to need these SSH agents very much later on in project 10, right? So let's stop there.